If we could find the mass of the air inside this cube, it would be about one kilogram or 2.2 pounds. And do you know how much water I could evaporate into this cube of air before the air was totally saturated and could hold no more water vapor? Is it 14 grams? a half a gram, or is it closer to 50 grams? The answer, well, that's where humidity gets interesting because it's all relative. At 70 degrees Fahrenheit, a kilogram of air can hold 14 grams of water vapor. So when I have 14 grams in it, that is 100% relative humidity. And if the air can hold 14 grams of water vapor, but I only evaporated seven grams into it, that's only holding half of what it could. That's 50% humidity. The air's just not living up to its full potential. But what if it's like negative 10 degrees, you know, Antarctic cold? Well, that kilogram of air could only hold about a half a gram of water vapor before it was saturated in 100% humidity. So 100% humidity in Antarctica is far drier than 100% humidity somewhere with 70 degree air. And that also explains why Antarctica is technically a desert. It's just too cold to even hold moisture in the air to precipitate. But what about summertime in Florida? Which, I'm not gonna lie, sounds kind of nice right now. If it were 100 degrees there, could the humidity be 100%? Well, 100 degree air can theoretically hold close to 50 grams of evaporated water, but that almost never happens. Even being just 70% humidity at 100 degrees is really, really humid. It would have 35 grams of water vapor in a cube of air. That's over two times as much as 100% humidity at 70 degrees. Enough to get people telling stories when they come home from vacation. I'm sure it felt like it must be 100% humidity, but it was probably just hyperbole. 